Cleary presents a unique look at Northwest Arkansas with music, interviews, drama, and personalities. And now, here's Mike. Welcome to Mike Cleary Presents. If you're ready to go out and listen to some live music, then the band Party Line is probably playing in a venue somewhere near you. Here to tell a little bit about the band and some of the upcoming venues is the lead vocalist for the band and one of my very good friends, Carrie Perrin-Smith. Carrie, welcome to the show. I'm glad you're here with us. I'm glad to be here. So tell me about Party Line. What kind of music is there, is the kind of music, like the... People say they're a cover band. Is that is that a good term for the band, a cover band? Yeah, we are definitely a cover band. Nobody writes their own music. We only aspire <laughs> to write our own music. But we think there is enough music out there that uh, people really resonate with, that they're not really interested in hearing covers from us. Um, <laughs> most of our set list today is out of the 1970s. And so um, we have kind of evolved into some Southern rock in addition to classic rock. So. It, it's been an evolution. We've been playing out of the outside the garage since 2011. <laughs> In fact, our, the first uh, year that we were out, we called it our playing outside the garage tour. Playing outside the garage. Yeah, little T-shirts that say playing outside the garage. Probably yeah, so. that would be awesome. Yeah, and it's probably that era of time where we probably shouldn't have been playing in venues, but Tom was really good at booking it. And so <laughs> we probably should have been in the garage a bit longer. <laughs> We have some film clips of some of the performances of the band. This first one is at the High Wassie gas station. I mean, this is a high point of their career, I'm sure. And this is me playing on the bass over in the corner. Same shirt, even. Same shirt. Look at you. Did you, that? Did you know that? I didn't realize I was going to wear the same shirt for the show. <laughs>
It's a good thing I didn't have the banjo in that set. I don't want to scare anybody off from wanting to come to see the band play. Banjos. I know. I played the banjo and I played the bass in the band before, but you've got some new members of the band now. We do. We do. And it was a long time coming. Um, you know, uh, our lead guitarist, um, Dustin Zimmer, yeah, he uh, just us. he just had a baby. He, now, he didn't have just baby. have a baby. His wife. Yeah, actually, right before that show, I mean, she was still at the the last uh, time we were at Hiawassee Store. Um, she had, was pregnant, and so yeah, so he has a brand new baby. He's got some other kiddos too at home, so we never see her now. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully, and then he recruited his um, his father in law. Uh, Brian Shamblin to join our band on bass and so Brian is a great guy and so we really enjoyed having him and then um, we just added after like a year-long search um, well I guess it wasn't quite a year was it but um, a lengthy search we added um, Shannon Hampton now as drummer and so we just played the first show with him last week and so it's very exciting uh, to have him and, and Tom and I have known uh, Shannon for 20 years and mm -hmm. so he's really good um, friends with um, his fiance and so anyway so it's kind of nice it's, it's like we have family and you know Dustin and Brian's family is just amazing they're just such delightful people yeah. you know we play music but we're also friends yeah well it's it's fun because you do a three hour show together you know you just get to be good friends yeah as well yeah. yeah you spend a lot of time with them and so we've always recruiting for a band is just so important because <laughs> you want a good fit well yeah you want, want fit you don't want any drama you don't want any drugs um, mm -hmm. you know they got to be able to lift heavy stuff yeah, you know, yeah. But they they pay us to play for or they we play for free they pay us to lift heavy stuff <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just where the, the charge goes in yeah Tom plays the keyboard and the guitars you saw him in the background there. Yeah. He's also the man manager of the book. Who's he the is. manager? Right? Well, no, no, no. Actually, he manages the band, books, so we really do have professional man uh, management. And he, um, you know, it was just something he kind of fell into. He, he was a salesperson in college, and, and that's really what you need to have your band be successful. Um, doesn't matter how great you are if you can't get booked. And the follow-up mm -hmm. required for booking is hard. Hard. Yeah, and this is a, a an area with a lot of uh, bands, but not a lot of places to play. Yeah, uh, he told me at one time he said it takes like seven calls yeah. to get somebody to respond back to you in order to book a gig, and that's a lot of work. Well, it is a lot of work, and it's been tough for our venues uh, during COVID. I mean, I mean, like Foghorns, we'd play ten shows at, at the different Foghorns restaurants, and yeah. last year they didn't, they couldn't even staff up enough to staff their patio. So they said, you know, we're just not going to do live music because we don't have enough to staff our patio. We have another clip of Kingfish, and that's in Fayetteville, right? Yes, it is. So you it's mostly do, just off Dixon Street. Yeah, you mostly do Northwest Arkansas, like uh, Washington and Benton counties. Yeah, mostly. Yeah, the the thing with most of our band members still work, and so just the logistics of, you know, getting off at five and going to you know, pick up your stuff and head out to some place that's two hours away is not possible on yeah. Friday night, you know, and then you got Saturday, <laughs> you just get in some booking logistics. So, yeah. so we have really tried to, um, to stay within the region. Um, it's possible for us to do some, you know, kind of outside the region, you know, get more in the two hour radius and do some shows um, at, um, you know, kind of these midday festivals. You know, I love playing those. I'd love to do a steady diet of those all summer. Playing outside is yeah. really neat. Well, we got this kingfish, and it highlights Dustin on lead guitar.
I noticed that you were doing some harmonica on that last clip. You were doing some Tom Petty songs. You were trying to do a little more percussion and harmonica playing with the band. Yeah, I always tell people my instrument is random percussion instruments. But, <laughs> but I am trying to learn harmonica. They would really like me to pick up some rhythm guitar as well. I'm not there yet. Um, but yeah, it, it's been kind of fun to challenge myself musically. Um, mm -hmm. to, to learn some new things. I mean, I was in band as a kid, but that was, you know, 100 years ago, so. <laughs> <laughs> but you've been playing a lot of Tom Petty. Do you like, what is your personal preference of kind of music that you play? You know, if, if I could play anything, it would be 80s hair band rock, but that's not what Tom wants to play, so. <laughs> but it's been really fun to, to step into this uh, southern rock genre. I mean, where you've got Kentucky Headhunters and the Eagles and, um, you know, we still have those great old favorites from CCR and, you know, that the crowd always goes wild for. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's really been fun to take these. And as, right now, we, we really don't have a lot of male vocalists in the band, you know, to do much. And so it's been fun for me to step into some of these, these um, you know, male, you know, originally recorded songs mm -hmm. and reinvent those for yeah. a woman. Yeah. And so I'll rewrite. I rewrite <laughs> lyrics. I sanitize lyrics too. Sorry. Um, it's not exactly the same song that you would hear on the radio. No. No, it is not. Um, no, no, no. YouTube copyright strike for being authentic to the song. <laughs> What kind of music does the audience particularly prefer when, when you're playing? Do they get excited when you play specific kind of songs? You know, it, it really has a lot to do with that signature riff. Can they pick that signature riff from the guitar out at the like first two seconds of the song? And so Leonard Skinner, you know, the crowd always goes nuts for, for Leonard Skinner. Um, you know, and there's, there's some, some songs we're starting to pick up out in the 90s, like What's Up? You know, I've always said, why do we do that song? Because it doesn't really fit within anything we're doing. But the crowd goes nuts over what's up. They sing along. I don't even have to sing. You know, it's like. Just hold the microphone out. That's right. We're doing you know this for you. It's for you. So. And that's okay. You know, because the, the truth is, you know, yeah, we play music, but we're, we're there. And the audience makes all the difference. You know, the audience that shows up on Hiawassee Store is amazing. You know, when you have a great audience there that, that loves your music, knows your music, and they're really there to have fun, it makes a huge difference in the quality of our show. We just, we interact more. We, I don't know, maybe we try harder. I don't know. But, yeah. you know, so I, I always kind of challenge our venues, you know. It's like, we're the right place for you if, or we're the right band for you if your audience really is the people that love this music. So Now, you've, you've played in venues outside Northwest Arkansas. You've been in Indigo Casino. Up yeah. There. And I, at one time you were trying to get into Eureka Springs. I'm not sure if that was canceled because of the pandemic or not. Yeah, I think it was more canceled because of cancel culture. But <laughs> <laughs> that happens to bands. Uh -huh. so, um, and yeah, so we've experienced some of that. I know that that affected some of our shows. Yeah, a lot of, lot of cancellations last year. I'm yeah, sure. yeah. So, well, just, you know, and, and it's hard for venues to pay for bands these days. And mm -hmm. so uh, we play Eureka Springs maybe a couple of times a year. Um, we have played a few casinos, so mm -hmm. uh, mostly what we're doing right now is around here just because of what nights the guys are available. Yeah. Um, you know, I would love to go outside, and I think once we get into the festival season, and that's really what I'm challenging Tom to do, mm -hmm. put us at festivals. Yeah. Um, I talked to a, a lady um, last night, she's recommending us for a veterans festival. You know, if we could, and I, I told Tom, if I could play motorcycle events and veterans events, I would be in my happy place. So, <laughs> well, um, motorcycle veterans events. Well, yeah. Yeah, there we go. There you go. That would be like primo. <laughs> but the, I mean, a lot of our music that we play really resonates with those two populations. Mm -hmm. And so, and something that was a surprise for me was we had been playing restaurant venues for a long time. And so we would have these like 14 year old kids would come up to us and say, oh my gosh, I l grew up listening to that in the back of my parents' minivan, you know, I know that song <laughs> and they knew every word of it. Well, now those, those uh, kids are college age 
And they're frequenting some of the, the adult venues that we, we play at, the over 21 venues. Mm -hmm. And so it's neat to go out in the audience when you're singing a song. And they know every single word of the song, and they're singing along. <laughs> so it's been kind of a surprise to see this Generation Z that's now the oldest of them, are about 24. And they know our music. So that's really a new target audience for mm -hmm. us, where millennials grew up more with hip-hop and things like that. Yeah, it's, it's, rappers. Yeah, yeah. So they don't don't really appreciate the genre at, at all and you know that's been a real challenge for us as um, working with the venues because all of the people who book for venues I should say all but most of them are now like Millennials mm -hmm. and so they're like well who would want to hear the music of the 60s and 70s and you know <laughs> and even the 80s you know uh -huh, yeah mm. we have another clip from Rutgers which is up by Noel and this has got some dancing we had the camera pan, pan back enough so that we could catch up some of the dancers in Rutgers up in Knoll. song keep your hands to yourself I think Tom said that was your theme song no I, I, I always introduce that as a song about abstinence oh okay and people are like what what and then the the, the signature riff comes on and then people everybody are, sings and everybody just laughs you know it's like oh yeah it's, I mean what a great what a great song I mean, yeah. it's, it's almost an anthem of my my high school years you know so tell me about some of the venues coming up for party line band Okay, so we play the very next one. Uh, we play mile 11 of the Bentonville Half Marathon. Now, you haven't lived until you've played mile 11 out in the woods on a generator. But <laughs> Tom goes, oh, we're just background noise. And I'm like, no, we're the people that are providing the energy to get up that last hill at the marathon. You want them to stop running and sit and listen, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> one time we had this guy. He had a leg cramp right there. And he's right. he, he falls down, and he's rolling around trying to get, get this leg cramp to go away. <laughs> Right in front of where we're playing. So I tell you, the marathon is pretty brutal. The people run through about 45 minutes that like run all the time. Mm -hmm. And then you've got like everybody else. And so they kind of file in. You've got the people who are like the first time marathon runners. It's great though. We really, um, we, we fill an important spot out there. But I can, I can tell you that gig is brutal. Uh, we have loaded in and well, we've, it's been cold very cold like several and we one day we rolled in to um, load in at 5 a.m. because you have to be set up and ready to play at 7 and um, it was snowing 
I have video sitting in the truck in the dark with snow falling in the headlights. <laughs> um, Tom comes ready with recorded music because with guitarists, I mean, I can sit there and put a scarf on and my gloves on my hands, but you get with the, the guitarist. I mean, once it's a certain degree, you're, you can't keep your, your fingers warmed yes. up. I mean, you, you certainly have a hard time playing the outdoor shows. You can't keep your, keep your guitars tuned at all. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, it's, it's a real test to your endurance. So you have the marathon coming up. When is this? Um, so April 2nd is when the Bentonville Half Marathon this is uh, this year. So it's not too late to train for that. So I would uh, highly <laughs> recommend that. I see all my friends go by and they're like, hey, you know? so it's kind of fun. I probably see more of our friends at the Bentonville Half Marathon than I do at our shows. But <laughs> when you're when you're in a band and you're old, you play. <laughs> Let's go to bed early. Yeah, you, right? yeah. Eight thirty, they're in bed. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So <laughs> we have to take Geritol breaks every once in a while. I know. Hey, Geritol is still the bomb. Twelve percent <laughs> alcohol by volume. <laughs> so, um, so we play Boar's Nest and Rogers. Uh, it's right there on Walnut, pretty close to I forty nine. And great little live music venue. They have live music every Friday and Saturday. They have karaoke on Wednesday. I sometimes go over for karaoke because we live really close. Uh, so fantastic group of regulars in there, and the place is crazy busy most of the time. So uh, kind of a built-in audience, and then we've got people that come out just to see us. They're like, well, let's see which band is there. Yeah. So, so how can people get a hold of your, do you have a website or email, or how do people get a get right, see the right, list? Right, right, We are on um, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at PartyLine479. Um, our website is PartyLineBand.com. So that has uh, the list of shows coming up. Um, sometimes deep dark secrets about the band, but uh, not, not. I haven't done any. Well, I like still got new band members. I don't want to run them off yet. <laughs> telling the I'm making up deep. I make up the deep dark secrets. <laughs> so. We have one more clip from last year's Bentonville Marathon. This was on the square in Bentonville. Yes. So is there anything else that you wanted to mention about the band or upcoming venues? You know, I, I, we're just really opening up our live music season, and it's lo opening up for everybody. So it's really important that we go out and support live music because it, it's, the musicians are not paid a lot. It's important that we drop money in the tip jar and support live music. You know, we do it for fun. But definitely, we've got a lot of musicians in the area that that's their full-time thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, go out, enjoy their music, bring friends. It's, it's a great time. We saw when the venue started opening up after COVID that uh, people were ready to get out. Now, I w we played some venues where you wouldn't know that there was any COVID restrictions. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and you know, and that was okay. You know, I'm like, people, you do you. So, mm -hmm. and we loved playing those. You know, you had, um, there's there's a lot of great places, you know, up here in Benton County for live music. You know, JJ's plays live music um, at both their, their Rogers and uh, Bella Vista location. You know, we, we think there's a huge opportunity for live music in the afternoon on a Saturday, you know, rather, because there's a lot of people that just don't drive after dark, you know, and you, you, you walk into, you walk into Gasano's, you walk into JJ's, and the place is packed. And yeah. Like, why would you not have live music for these people? Exactly. You know, and of course, it's people who would know our music, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So, anyway, I think that, that sometimes venues are, are not really thinking, they're like, oh, yeah, we got plenty of people, and we don't have to attract, get live music in here, but live music really is amazing. Oh, yeah, amazing. it's an additional draw. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and so, you know, I say, you know, the public needs to support live music as much as they can, and, mm -hmm. you know, now you can kind of go online and check out, you know, are they, you know, a death metal band? Well, maybe if death metal isn't your thing, don't go that night. <laughs> but, you know, because mm -hmm. you've got places like Good Vibrations and Boar's Nest up here. Uh, Rutgers is a fantastic venue. It is smoking, and not that's not everybody's jam. It's not really, like, I mean, I've played some, we, we kind of our teeth on smoky night spots, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, back in the day, Mike used to be in the band with us. So he's like one of the original founders of the band and he's kind of been in and out over time. But um, he, I mean, we played some, some, I mean, back then you had, uh, you know, Shirley's was smoking and, um, you know, probably would fall in that category mm -hmm. of a smoky dive. Yeah, and, there was some um, smoky bars Bayou, we played in, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. man, the Bayou and Rogers was an amazing place for live music. Mm -hmm. Very smoky. <laughs> uh, you know, and Good Vibrations was smoky until 2020, and while things were kind of shut down, he converted the, the place. Mm -hmm. uh, they had kind of done an awkward expansion. You couldn't listen to live music in the same room we were playing pool in, and so they he, he relayed it out, put up this beautiful light curtain, lighting, amazing. Yeah. So, so, anyway, so there's there's plenty of places. We think restaurant venues will be opening back up yeah. a little better, so maybe we'll see more of that. Good. Well, the, the crew in the recording booth wanted me to play a, a song, or at least a, a chorus, with you, because you and I have been playing music together for probably 10 years. Yeah, maybe. actually, well, yeah. well, yeah, probably we were playing in the garage in 2010. So, yeah, yeah well, we're more getting, than 10 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where my gray hair came from, is playing the band. Playing, the band. playing, or playing music with me. <laughs> maybe that was it. <laughs> we're gonna, we're, we're just gonna, I'm gonna throw, we're just gonna throw a, a chorus of uh, Blowing in the Wind. Okay. Just, the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. So now you know why I'm not in a band anymore. No, no, I know. no, no. Well, Carrie, I appreciate you being with us today, and thank you for promoting Party Line Band. For more information, go to PartyLineBand.com or visit them on Facebook. Or uh, yes, uh, Party Line 479. And, yes. and incidentally, we are that Party Line if you're a person of a certain age and remember what a Party Line was. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie, thank you for joining us today. Appreciate you tuning in to Bella Vista Community Television. If I'm Mike Cleary, have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining us today. Watch our schedules for the next program or check us out on YouTube. This has been a presentation of Bella Vista Community Television.